The concept of lac operon was given by two scientists in 1960 and they got the Nobel Prize for that as well. The scientists were Jacob and Monod. Jacob and Monod told us that if the bacteria wants to regulate its genetic expression that what gene it wants to express and what not, then how it can regulate them. A watchmaker can make a functional watch only when, when he is being given each and every spare part of the watch. If even one part is missing, then he will not be able to make a functional watch. An ATM cannot give you half of the money just because you got half of the pen digits right. If you want to take money out of the ATM machine, then you have to have all the four digits correct. In absence of glucose, bacteria can utilize lactose and it can use it to harvest energy. And to harvest energy, it requires three enzymes. And these three enzymes are beta-galactosidase, permease and transacetylase. So the concept is, if the bacteria wants to utilize lactose as its energy substrate, then he has to have all these three enzymes working. So either he requires all of them or he requires none of them. And this is the concept of operon. What bacteria can do, it can take the respective genes of each enzyme and it can place it adjacent to each other under one promoter and one terminator. And this is nothing but an operon. There can be several regulatory sequences in an operon. The very first is the promoter. A promoter is the sequence of nucleotide onto which a protein can bind. And in this condition, the protein is the sigma factor. Sigma factor can help RNA polymerase to recruit onto the DNA so that it can polymerize the gene. The second regulatory sequence is the operator and onto operator to kind of a protein bind. One protein can enhance its expression and these proteins are known as activator. The second kind of protein actually repress the expression that's why they known as a repressor. The next regulatory sequence is terminator. And terminator is almost same as the promoter. It is a protein in this case it is the rho factor which can bind on to the DNA and it can help RNA polymerase to jump off the DNA. And this is how it terminates the transcription. If this is the LAC operon with its respective promoter, operator and genes along with the terminator, P for the promoter, O for the operator, Z for beta-galactosidase and Y for the permease and A for the transacetylase and T for the terminator. There is another gene under one promoter and a terminator is known as a LAC I gene. LAC I gene is able to make an mRNA which can be translated by ribosome and it makes a protein. This protein is known as a repressor. Repressor can bind onto the operator and it will not allow RNA polymerase to bind onto the promoter so that it can make the RNA. And hence, transcription does not take place. But what if lactose can add it into the system? If the lactose are being added into the system, then lactose can bind on to the repressor protein and now repressor protein is unable to bind to the operator. And if it is unable to bind to the operator, then RNA polymerase can jump onto the promoter and it can transcribe the gene. And after the transcription of the ZYA gene, it can terminate itself by the terminator. The mRNA of the ZYA gene can be placed on to different ribosomes, but they can be attached with each other. The situation in which an mRNA is bound on to several different ribosomes at one time is known as polysome. And it can synthesize beta-galactosidase, permease and transacetylase. The bacteria can be grown into the lab in a conical flask with the medium luria broth and bacteria flourish very nicely into this medium. If you try to see one bacteria from this flask, then this is the lac rep then this is the lac operon which can be controlled by lac i gene. Lac i gene makes a repressor and this repressor can bind on to the operator and transcription does not take place. 
But what if you add lactose into the medium? Lactose can take entry inside the cell and it can bind to the repressor. Now repressor cannot bind to the operator so the transcription can happen. By the RNA polymerase and it can make different enzymes such as beta galactosidase permease permease can incorporate itself into the plasma membrane so that more amount of lactose can take entry into the cell lactose is made up of glucose and galactose if the glucose is already present into the environment which is the primary source for the bacteria food then does it make sense the bacteria will express its lac operon no so in presence of glucose the lac operon does not function low glucose leads to increased lac operon expression and high glucose leads to low lac operon expression let us try to compare that what is going to happen if the concentration is glucose is low into the environment and if it is high if the concentration is low into the membrane there is an enzyme which is known as the adenyl cyclase which can convert atp into the cyclic amp and the cyclic amp can bind with another protein which is known as the cap protein and this cap protein along with the cyclic amp bind on to the lac operon and it can act as an activator and facilitate the transcription process while on to the other hand if the concentration of glucose is high the adenyl cyclase activity goes down now it cannot convert the atp into the cyclic amp and hence no enzyme for lactose degradation and glucose is already there.